Now uh, we'd look at uh, some interesting dynamics of the NGN based marketplace, how it is affect the rules and regulations and the overall uh, um, landscape of policies in a certain country. So we'll start off with a, a quick recap of current marketplace and we'll see how NGN has affected um, the uh, regulations themselves um, rather than the regulations impacting the evolution of NGN. And uh, we, we, we take examples from VoIP and IP television. As far as the current marketplace is concerned, uh, we can think about Pakistan Telecom Authority and PAMRA, which govern the regulations for traditional services for uh, uh, telephony and uh, television. But now, the telecom providers are now becoming NGN providers, uh, offering a suite of services in addition to uh, typical connectivity. Uh, so, the existing regulations of uh, the PSTN, PML, uh, PL, uh, MN environment is now going to be applied straightforward for QS enabled VoIP uh, as far as the uh, data plane is concerned. But for, uh, uh, for the control plane, uh, certain regulations have to be thought about. Um, why did I uh, assume so? Or why did I say that uh, we need to look at the control plane and the signaling plane with regards to regulations? if the former is affected is not affected by uh, the evolution of ngn the later is indeed uh, affected because ngns have transformed uh, the dynamics of the marketplace it allows a uh, new market uh, players or entrants to have a more participatory and uh, emerging role so ngn does not totally eliminate the, uh, the uh, traditional uh, market uh, powers but only changes the way the market powers used to monopolize the uh, environment so it means we can think about uh, dominant market powers to be uh, still relevant but now they do not have a quote unquote to eat the cake and have it because uh, the entire value chain is now quite uh, uh, specific so the variety of business players as in device, network, platform, uh, application, and content uh, are all now going to be provided with specific uh, requirements. So one size fits all is no more possible. So it means we'll have some experts or niche market players which would be good in one but not so good in the other. So this overall offsets the market powers and realigns them also creates an opportunity for um, third party um, service providers which could be providing devices content and so forth so this allows us to um, uh, move away from traditional highly regimented controlled uh, regime and and allow us to move to more a deregulated environment. Uh, so this means that uh, if we if we assume that we are going to deregulate everything, then the uh, Achilles heel of all the engine services, which is the broadband access, could also become vulnerable. But the countries ensure that uh, the most important element of uh, um, NGN, that is the broadband access, is not deregulated um, let's take some useful and interesting insights from voice over ip um, at the moment voice over ip which is best effort um, is deregulated uh, as i said earlier when we talk about skype uh, facetime etc uh, these are pretty much deregulated because these are considered as over the top um, but if quality of service enabled VoIP is offered in a certain NGN environment where the network provider and the service provider are working uh, in conjunction, uh, so uh, more fundamental issues like uh, traditional telephony 
are going to emerge like caller line identification has to be provided call forwarding call blocking etc and um, uh, the traditional role of uh, the telecom provider as in PSTNs to have the uh, utility uh, power supply uh, if you remember the PTCL telephone having that uh, dial tone uh, was the responsibility of the of PTCL itself so 911 emergency calls uh, and certain lawful interception now these are going to become uh, important issues the regulation of IPTV services in engine market is also going to be similar. Uh, we know that uh, we've lived with cable television and uh, uh, terrestrial broadcast and digital video broadcast for a very long time. Uh, the content of uh, um, um, uh, IPTV is now going to be uh, following similar constraints uh, which depend upon the, uh, the, the polity, uh, and the culture, the language, and the uh, government. So uh, the overall political, socio-political environment is going not is going to determine the impact on the provisioning of uh, IPTV. Um, in IPTV, if we look at um, um, Netflix and uh, uh, iFlix, for instance, and uh, uh, the uh, Amazon TV. Uh, we understand that uh, the video on demand is what they provide. They create a lot of content and the best effort uh, IPTV like um, uh, uh, YouTube because it's, it's the responsibility of YouTube servers as such, not the uh, ser uh, network provider. So it means these are largely unregulated. Whatever content is hosted is beyond the jurisdiction of a certain nation state. So each country applies its own uh, uh, regulations for accessing the content however so uh, the caveat now is that earlier we used to have one clause or one obligation which was applicable to the network and service providers but since now they've become separable uh, so it is very hard to ensure compliance to a certain clause by all the uh, players and very important uh, all these uh, uh, players or the market forces are now investing on uh, economizing uh, their profits or their uh, uh, profit margins by economies of scope that is they are diversifying their portfolios that makes uh, the regulation uh, landscape even more challenging 